Welcome to The Outlet, an OTG production. What's up, NBA fans? Welcome to another edition of The Outlet. With me, as always, Parth. What's up, bro? Same old Parth, getting into these rankings. And our team today, number 25, the Los Angeles Lakers. Before we talk about the Lakers, here's a clip from last season. A lot like Carmelo yeah. in New York. You know, people would always get on Carmelo last year. He was put in positions where uh, they're not ready to go. What are the Lakers doing? Yeah, what are the Lakers doing? <laughs> no focus, losing track of players, too busy trying to have a team huddle instead of paying attention to the other team. Sounds like when, the Lakers all last season. When's the last time you've seen a huddle like that in a, in the professional game? Like you always see it during college basketball. They do it like after every foul or after every free throw or whatever. But when's the last time you've seen that professionally excluding this clip? I've I never mean, seen it. I've never seen it in the third quarter. I mean, I think occasionally I see it in maybe the fourth, but not in the third. On your home floor, you have a lead. It's not that crazy of a possession. You just huddling up, lose track, and Blake Griffin gets an easy slam. That would piss me off if I was a Laker fan. Yeah, it defines a, defines a Lakers season perfectly. Pretty much. So let's talk about the Lakers. Do you think this is a fair ranking for them? I think it is. it is a fair ranking. However, I think with – with Kobe back in the fold, and if he can stay healthy, I think they can really surpass this ranking and possibly make a playoff push. So I think 25 is good for now, um, coming into the season just because they have a lot of question marks, but I wouldn't be surprised if the Lakers are actually a pretty decent team this season. Uh, I could see the Lakers being competitive. I have a tough time seeing them compete for the eighth spot just because the West's so tough. They would need a huge season from Kobe, all-star level, everything come to play he's going to need to average around 20 points and close to probably double digit assist for them to compete for the playoffs they're going to need a lot of young guys to step up i'll see them probably at the bottom of the west again this year but they have potential especially going forward with some of the young guards fair enough fair enough so let's talk about the key returners we got kobe Bryant, the black mamba jordan clarkson julius randall and swaggy p who do you like? Who do you think is going to have a big season? Uh, as far as having a big season, I think Jordan Clarkson is going to explode. I really love his game. Athletic. Uh, still needs to work on a shot like most young players do. But especially after being under the tutelage of Kobe Bryant, I think he's primed for a really, really explosive and excellent season this year. And of course, got to have Kobe Bryant in there as well. Um, his health has been shaky the last three seasons. I think he's ended all all three all the last three seasons with um, season-ending injuries, major injuries. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if he can stay healthy. But yeah, healthy. I think those two are really primed for big seasons in the backcourt. I love Clarkson too. He came on strong at the end of last season. Like you said, Kobe Bryant was showing him a thing or two. He worked with Steve Nash a little bit. Kid's got a lot of potential. He's long, pretty athletic. He's working on his jumper. He worked on his playmaking abilities. He has a bright future. And, you know, Kobe, we need him to be healthy. He needs an all-star season for the Lakers to compete, and they really need his leadership on the floor just with these young guys. So I'm also interested for him. to see how Julius Randle returns uh, from his broken leg. I know he played in the summer league. He didn't look great, but he did look like he put on a, a good amount of weight in terms of muscle this offseason. So it'll be interesting to see how uh, his new body and – Really, I mean, he he's basically a rookie. And so Pretty it'll much. be interesting to see how uh, he trans his, translates his game from Kentucky to now the Los Angeles Lakers. Yeah, he can have a big impact on Lakers season because we really don't know what you're going to get with him. You don't know if he's going to come in and have a solid rookie, pretty much rookie season, or if he's going to struggle a little bit with adjusting to the NBA since he didn't get to play last year. So he's a pretty much a wild card for me. He could really have some nice leeway if he comes in strong. Um, let's talk about some of the offseason moves. They added D'Angelo Russell, Roy Hibbert, Lou Williams, Brandon Bass. They lost Jeremy Lin, Ed Davis, Wayne Ellington, Jordan Hill, a few other guys. What moves do you like? Uh, I do like the pickup of Roy Hibbert. Essentially, it was a Jordan Hill for Roy Hibbert trade. And I'll put trade in uh, quotations. But... I like him as a one-year stopgap option. I think he's making like 15-something, $16 million a season. A little pricey for me, but for one year, um, I'm okay with that. 
Uh, I don't. I think he's gone after one year. Maybe he's even a uh, a trade chip at the trade deadline if he starts the season out well. And I also like Lou Williams. I know we didn't talk about Nick Young being a uh, key returner, but I think his role off the bench, Nick Nick Young's role off the bench will be diminished as a better bench scorer and Lou Williams enters the fray. Yeah, I could definitely see him hurt Nick uh, Nick Young's value. Lou Williams is a better player. He won six man of the year. And I like the Ray Hibbert pickup too. Like you said, they got him pretty much. They traded Jordan Hill for him. He's got a big contract. It's expiring though, so it could be a trade chip or it just gives him some cap room for next season. Worst case scenario, he gives him cap room and he doesn't play well all, all year. Not a big deal. So I like that. What moves don't you like? I don't like losing Ed Davis. I thought I thought he was a uh, good player for them last season. I mean, they weren't a great team, but he was a decent player on a great team or a, a decent player on a bad team, I should say. He's a productive player. He gives you a press in the paint. He rebounds. He offensive rebounds, gets a lot of putbacks. Always a player not bad to have around. And I also don't like losing uh, Wayne Ellington. I'd much rather have Wayne Ellington coming off my bench than uh, Nick Young. Just because Wayne Ellington, you know, night after night, you can put the ball in the basket. You can, he's a shooter, um, an elite shooter, I would say. And uh, I think having that shooting ability every single night beats what you have in an X-factor sort of role that Nick Young plays, where he can be good one game and then be terrible the next 10. Happy the Nets picked up Wayne Ellington. Like I've said before, he's a professional, professional NBA player. He's going to come in, play his role. He's not going to try to overachieve. He's not going to underachieve. But Nick Young, you don't know what you're going to get. So I'd rather have Ellington. I think the Lakers probably would too. But moving Nick Young isn't an easy job. And this this uh, Lakers team last season, was, last season was one of the worst defensive teams in the league coming in at 29th um, in defensive rating. And so losing Wes Johnson, who I think could be a really good defender just because of his athleticism, uh, they lost him to the Clippers, so he'll be in the Staples Center just in, in a different uh, and definitely uglier uniform. <laughs> I agree yeah, with sorry, that. Sorry, that rebrand didn't really work out for me. Uh, but I think losing him and then also losing Rodney Price. And now <laughs> listen to this. I haven't seen much of Rodney Price, but what I have seen is that man wants to play defense. He wants to play defense so bad that when he loses a shoe, he'll throw it at you. <laughs> That's how bad this guy wants to play defense. So you always want you always want tenacity like that on the court. Especially on a team that came in almost the, at last in the defense in the NBA. So they need their defenders. They definitely need their perimeter defenders too. And I think Wayne Ellington, Wes Johnson, and Ronnie Price are all guys who at least try hard on the defensive end and showed potential. So losing them and adding some guys who really don't play that great uh, defense like Lou Williams doesn't really help. They really need Hibbert to step up and be a defensive stopper like he once was, but who knows. So let's get into the X factor for the Lakers this season. What's the biggest X factor for you? I would say I would say Kobe Bryant's health. I'm I'm a big fan of the Mamba, um, and his career is winding down. I definitely want to see him be able to complete the season because because I think his I think his contract expires after this year, and so you never know what. You never know what the future holds, but I do want to see him healthy and uh, be able to make an impact for this Lakers team this year. So my personal X factor is Kobe Bryant. I think the team's X factor, I would say, I would say it's also Kobe Bryant. You you definitely want him uh, as a leader, especially with the young guards you have in Clarkson and uh, Russell. I think learning under one of the greats of the game can only benefit them tremendously. Yeah, they need Kobe Bryant. That's going to be my X factor as well for both me personally and the team because you want Kobe out there. You need to show these young guns how to play. You need his veteran presence, and you just need that killer instinct on that team, which some of the players probably are labeled soft. So they need Kobe out there, toughen them up a little bit, and they need his talents on the floor just because if he's not out there, this team's really going to struggle. So what do you think is the best case scenario for the Lakers this upcoming season? So the Lakers kind of have two paths that they can go on. I mentioned earlier that they could probably make a run for the eighth seed, and I don't think you were with that. <laughs> I think you were kind of against that. So I would hate to see the Lakers finish in like that 10 or let's say 11, 9 to 11 range where they don't make the playoffs um, and they lose that first-round draft pick Cause current, because currently their 2016 first-round draft pick is going to Philadelphia. 
but the Lakers have it protect, protected for selections one through three. So either the Lakers are really bad and are able to retain that selection um, or they make the playoffs. I think those are the two best case scenarios. You don't want to be in that middle ground. Exactly. You don't want to be in the middle ground. You lose the first round pick. You don't get any playoff experience. So I'm going to have to agree with that. They want to either land in the eighth spot, which I think will be really tough in the West, and I just kind of don't see it happening, or they just want to have another bad season, end with a top pick, and keep their pick for next year and just regroup. And hopefully, it's really, I'm sorry, continue. And hopefully pick up maybe a few free agents because I think they have some nice cap room again this upcoming offseason. Yeah, they definitely do have the room, but it's hard to see a Kobe Bryant team, especially if he's on the court, uh, be – be one of the worst teams in the league and finish with a top three pick. I don't think Kobe would be down for that. Exactly. I don't and, think he would be. And it's like for, for the Lakers fan, they have like a dilemma here because they're probably the best player in their franchise history and Kobe Bryant it could be gone after this year. And so you definitely want to see him in the playoffs. I know I do, but the future of the Lakers is, is through their draft picks and what they can do in free agency and trades. And so the future obviously doesn't involve Kobe Bryant, but you're kind, of torn, you're kind of torn as a Lakers fan. All right, do I want do I want to tank like Philly does or do I want to make a run? So it'll be interesting to see what the Lakers actually do. Yeah, definitely torn because, what, you make the run for the eighth spot, maybe you make a trade at the deadline, pick up a quality player, and you, you don't really aren't going to do much in the West because we know how crazy the teams like the Spurs, the Warriors, the Rockets, the Clippers, and the Thunder are like, so – Coming out of there is almost pretty much impossible for the Lakers. So it's either that or you just tough it out and get the lottery team. But we both know Kobe's not going to want to lose that many games. So what's worst case scenario for the Lakers? That middle ground. I think. Yep. If, I think if they reach that middle ground, it'd be it'd be terrible. You don't you don't make the playoffs and you don't get that pick. Um, I think that really set the team back. And like, even if they do make that middle ground, you want if if Kobe gets hurt. It'll really hurt this team, especially it'll hurt me because I'll probably watch them 19 times on national TV. <laughs> um, and so I want to I want to see Kobe Bryant play, and I want to see the young guys develop like Jordan Clarkson, D'Angelo Russell. So if they don't develop as well, and let, let's throw Julius Randle in there as well, let's not forget about him. But if if they don't develop, I think it really takes it really sets the team back. And if they if they don't develop and they are in that middle ground area. It'll be a really bad year for the Lakers. It's pretty much a lose-lose. So on to our next segment, the truth. So the truth, our emoji for the Lakers is an hourglass, and the hourglass is almost empty, which signifies uh, Kobe Bryant's end to his, Kobe Bryant's uh, end to his career and how the Lakers don't have much time to win with him. Yeah. I mean, that pretty much signifies that because Kobe's got a season, maybe a few seasons left, and the Lakers want to get the most out of it. And they want to get let him go out on his last hurrah, at least make the playoffs once or twice for him before he leaves. So it's a pretty good emoji right there. Now let's talk about League Pass. We know the Lakers got a lot of nationally televised games. Are you going to catch them on League Pass, or are you just going to leave it to national television? Well, they have, they have 19 national television games, um, like I said, but – it, it all depends on Kobe. I, I want to watch Kobe. If it's a close game, I definitely want to watch Kobe. Uh, but even, <laughs> like, League Pass is going to be so good for the Lakers, I feel like, because you get, you're going to get to see Kobe Bryant yell at Roy Hibbert. <laughs> and that's going be, to be better than any VH1 reality show that you can think of. Kobe yeah. Bryant yelling at Roy Hibbert. And then I think he's probably yelling at Nick Young, too, to be honest. I think that dynamic will be excellent, too. And so yeah, I, I want to say I'll watch them, but I think national TV is enough for me. <laughs> I'm probably going to have to agree with you on that. I'll stick with the national television. I'll probably tune in a few times to late night games, catch Kobe's fourth quarter maybe if it's a close game, but I'm not going to probably tune in for the full 48 minutes. What do you think about ballers? Would you rather watch that uh, HBO's ballers or would you, would you watch uh, Lakers on League Pass? I'm a big basketball guy. It's hard for me not to watch basketball. So I'll probably go with the Lakers unless it's like a baller season finale. So Lakers will win just because it's a basketball game, but it's a close one. I've never seen ballers, so. I mean, The Rock's pretty cool. I mean, who doesn't like The Rock? Yeah, the shows... I used to love uh, WWE when The Rock was, when Rock was uh, in his prime. 
exactly. I mean, it's got The Rock. It's got a few other NFL players, a uh, little guest star. And so it's pretty interesting. And you see the lifestyle they live. And you know HBO shows are usually good. All right. But that wraps it up for today. Thank you guys for listening. And our hint for our next team is they play in the Mecca basketball.